the first thing that is always important to remember about a troll level that a lot of people forget is that if you're aiming to make a good troll level, then your goal is always to make the player laugh and not to frustrate them. You want to have sections that will kill them in humorous ways, but will also immediately or nearly immediately make it clear what exactly it was that they were supposed to be doing. And now that can be, you know, a quick death, like, you know, suddenly muncher in your face. No! And it's like, okay, avoid the muncher. Or it can also be like a slow death where it shows you, like, you were supposed to go over there instead of over here, and now you have to jump down a pit, or you realize that, that you have no choice or whatever. Okay, I will accept my fate. <laughs> Anytime I'm watching Twitch, um, I'm watching people play levels, or I'm playing levels myself, I'm always on the lookout for unusual mechanics, and I think to myself, how can these be turned to trolling? And then if something seems viable, I add it to my list, and then when I go to make a level, I'll take four or five things from this list, and I'll put them in my level, and then I'll build sections out from each of these things. You may notice that, that the style of my levels tends to be disconnected, small individual sections that, like, do a whole bunch of trolling, and then you go through a pipe or a door, and you get to a section that is usually completely unrelated to where you were before, and more trolling happens. That's my creative process. Hold up a second there, Twitch Defender. Hi everyone, I'm YouTube Defender, and as any of you who watch his streams already know, Twitch Defender over here is a dummy. He did a commentary stream with no advanced planning, and he was saying um and like every two seconds. I mean, sure, you're going to tell me to go easy on him, he hasn't been streaming that long, it was his first commentary stream, but he didn't even show the sections of the level in order. I'm going to do the best that I can with him, and I'm going to pop in later to fill in anything that he may have forgotten, but the video is going to contain a lot of random cuts in order to keep the audio more coherent. I'm sure Dummy over here is very sorry for this. Let's go to this section, for example. Um, so in this section, I basically had one main troll mechanic that I was going to do here. A launcher, this launcher, which is just freestanding, like a normal object. If it falls into a clown car, it ends up being able to go through pretty much anything solid. And I wanted to create a setup that had launchers that looked like normal launchers, that they weren't going to do anything crazy, and then they would drop, and then go through something solid and ultimately crush you. Maybe that's what I was supposed to do. <laughs> Fuck, I'll take it. Uh... Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> and I actually used that mechanic twice in this section. Um, I may be, I, actually, I may be getting ahead of myself. I should probably show you guys this section just in case anybody didn't see this level yet. You come through this pipe, and you're like, okay, I'm in this section. That guy pops up, and it's like, oh, I was supposed to jump on the bomb, drop the launcher, go through the pipe. Sure, that all makes sense. But when you do that, jump on that guy, the bomb blows that up, and then Mushroom lands perfectly in there, and this clown car crushes you. So ultimately what you actually need to do is get that mushroom, you damage boost up through these saws, um, this launcher pushes you through this bumper. Just need to stand here, right? Oh, uh, what? This bomb delivery system was actually used to be pretty different. It, the, the bomb used to be in there, and I used to have a block like that, so that um, you could get as many bombs as you... There, and there wasn't a mole there, ignore the mole. Um, you could get as many bombs as you wanted. But for some reason, people seem to have trouble dropping bombs into this little hole. Nice. 
Oh, damn it. I feel like I could just, like... Oh, God. Come on, in there. Ah, oh, God damn it. Oh, God, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. Oh god, go! Oh my god! Oh gosh, this level has everything in it. Ah, oh, one more to it. What is this? The hardest level ever. Hardest level ever. Oh god, just get it in the hole! I changed it to this um, mole delivery system, which also added a troll, because if the mole pops up and you don't jump on the bomb, then you've now lost your chance. It's like, oh, I was supposed to jump on that, break these blocks, that'll fall. So you go up here, this pushes you through, I'll give you another mushroom, that's fine. Then you get here and you're like, do I hit this block? What's that bomb gonna do? Nothing. In the meantime, there was a piranha plant here, and then the muncher fell on it and blocked you in here. You could have damage boosted through the piranha plant, but now your only choice is the disrespect block. What? What? Why would I do that? Why would I? Oh. <laughs> okay, I will accept my fate. <laughs> Damage boost through here, you're like, oh, jump up there to get to the pipe. No, I can't get up there anymore. Then that one pushes you this way at light speed, pushes you through that bumper. There's there's a door, P door there that you were supposed to go through. What is going on? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? If you end up in here, like this launcher won't be here. You end up in here, you get pushed through here without the... Uh, Without having gone through the P door, then there's this, and you have to wait for this slow fire bar in order to kill yourself. This launcher also uses the same falling into a clown car mechanic. If you hold up, you actually go through the P door, and then there's a muncher that bounces into your face. Oh, you do get it for a split second. <gasps> you little shit! <laughs> Alright, got it. Oh my god, there is a muncher in my face! Damn it! <laughs> um, if that doesn't bounce in your face, you can go this way. If you haven't built this bridge, you're screwed. Wait, should I have done more? Geek, I expected you of all people to build the bridge! <laughs> you go over here, this pipe is fake. There's actually a key door behind the launcher. This launcher will drop down to this level, and you'll get a key, and it'll let you through. But the, the entire purpose of this section was basically trolls upon trolls upon trolls to cover... The two basic things that I had on my list that this section is based off of were one, the launcher falling into the clown car and then going through solid objects thing. And also, separately on my list, I had the idea for a section that has like a row of hidden blocks that makes it seem like it's just like, okay, this is the wrong way to go. But then you come back to from above later and if you haven't hit them, then you're out of luck. So basically, this this entire section is covering those two things and adding trolls to enhance those two things. So over here, for example, once I basically had this this main room here, I said, okay, so I want to have this section where you have this launcher crush you. Fine. So, but what is the actual way out. So it had to obviously be something where the only choice was to break the blocks to ultimately have the launcher crush you. My next step in this creative process was to make the aesthetic saws up here, which are actually your way out. And, you know, I put a, a mushroom in the launcher, and I actually got super lucky. So if you're not standing in the right spot when this happens, so that blows up, and it shoots the mushroom, and it goes perfectly into that little hole. That wasn't entirely planned. That 
was pretty much pure luck that the level lined up that way, and it was like, oh my god, it just shoots the mushroom perfectly in there every single time. Bonus troll, I'm leaving that in, heck yeah. So then, once, once I had that, I was like, okay, so you escape up to here. Next, what do we do up here? So I was like, well, the launcher can push you through a bumper, that could be fun. And then I was like, well, what should come after the bumper? I noticed that when when you have the launcher push you through this bumper, it also gives you a mushroom. So I was like, I need something to get rid of the mushroom. Because, like, obviously in a troll level, you don't want someone to have a mushroom for long, because that can ruin further trolls. So then I came up with this setup of here with the piranha and the muncher, which led to me adding the bomb over here. What? Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No! It's just a fucking beacon of hope! <laughs> I I can sit here and die. If you hit the bomb, it just like... You're standing here, watching the bomb, waiting to see where it goes. It does nothing over here, but in the meantime, that happens. It was funny, actually, last night when Carl played this, he never hit this bomb. He was just distracted by the disrespect block down here. And um, basically, like, he hit the bomb later, after having realized he just needs to run through here, and was like, what is that bomb? Do I need to hit that bomb? Alright, Z. Wait, where is that bomb? At what point was that bomb a thing? Sometimes these things don't work out exactly the way you plan. So basically, the bomb was added to distract you for long enough to get trolled by that. The disrespect block is actually there to get rid of the mushroom that comes from the launcher, so that you can't get an extra mushroom on the way back when the launcher is pushing you the other way. And when I got over here, I was like, well what should I do next, and I would noticed, whoops, I noticed that basically back over here, I was going for sort of a symmetrical aesthetic, um, so because I put this bumper over here, I then wanted to put this bumper over here, and if I was going to have that bumper over there, I was like, well, if this room's going to be symmetrical, I should probably do something with the left side of it. The next decision that I made was basically, okay, so, like, you go this way, and then it shoots you back this way. Oh my god! And what happens when you go this way. So obviously it was, well, you don't just let yourself get shot all the way this way. Getting shot all the way this way is going to be the troll because you're not going to notice what's happening. You're going to freak out. You're going to be like, what's going on? And especially with how I set it up with the contraption over here, where basically you get over here and like you can't go anywhere you're locked in behind this muncher you think it's gonna slam you into the muncher it pows the muncher um, and it's like so much is happening all at the same time you don't know what's going on you're definitely not gonna notice this door inside the the um, donut especially since it's a P door and it only activates when you are a block away from it and you're moving at light speed. I concluded that the P door was the most effective way out over here. Also because, you know, it activates right here, then once you're in the Carl box, you can clearly see the P door. I even added an arrow up here pointing to it so that it's really hard to miss. The bomb and hidden block here are to prevent a soft lock if you accidentally go back through the P door after getting pushed through. Otherwise, you could get stuck between the two bumpers. The way that this works is that the bomb will only spawn if the P-switch is active, and it will blow up the coin to make sure that it can't turn back into a block after the P-switch wears off. You can then get into this little mushroom pit and hit the hidden block, which contains a potaboo, which will actually kill you. The next thing that I did was, okay, so the P-door 
is going to lead to the part that um, does the the blocks. This is the point when, when I introduced the hidden block bridge. Originally, there was nothing over here. This was just solid, and then you had the launcher shoot you over this way. Like, while I was creating it. Like, this wasn't, like, a complete version or anything. It was just, like, in, in the progression of my process, like, originally I had just drawn solid blocks here, but then I was like, you know, this is a good place for that bridge building troll that I had been thinking of. Um, especially, like, you come through this P-door, you're gonna go this way, and, and that's a good place for it. I get it. <laughs> I also added these turn blocks for aesthetic reasons, but also um, to discourage people who are in this section from thinking that they could go up and to the left from here. So then once I added the P-door, I was like, all right, we can add a few trolls in this top section. So the first thing that I added, of course, was the note block here. I don't trust you, fuck off. What? What? What did Carl refer to it as? There was like a bouncy fuck you up there. There's a little poot poot fuck you up there. Now, obviously, normally, if you end up on top of the screen like this, it's a soft lock. So, I needed to add some kind of an anti soft lock. And I played with a whole bunch of arrangements for this before I came up with the simplicity of what I have right here. So, I have this muncher here. I have the spring here, and I have this muncher here. This muncher here I added afterwards. If you watch what happens here, that spring pushed the muncher up off screen. Fuck me, son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, there's a muncher up there. I tried a whole bunch of arrangements here because I wanted something that wouldn't be a soft lock, but also wouldn't make it too hard to do the tiny little Z jump over this note block. No! <laughs> Some of my earlier arrangements had the muncher ending up like roughly here, like here, but like one block higher. Um, and it's possible from here to do the, the Z jump like that, but you would die to that muncher too much. So I really wanted the muncher to be off on, to, on the edge like that. It was like, okay, so, a flying something right under a muncher here can push it up. So I was like, what's that something gonna be? A lot of my thought process is um, disguising my setups as if there's something else. So you'll notice that here. Basically, I ultimately decided on the sideways spring because this sideways spring Bounces this muncher into your face as soon as you come through the P-door. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh! No! <laughs> and you basically think, oh, the sideways spring was there to bounce that muncher into my face. And it disguises the, the other muncher that's there, which is part of the nope lock troll. <laughs> That's so stupid! That's so stupid! Oh, come on! Come on! Has anyone died like that? I bet I'm the first. And here we have just the row of hidden blocks because for aesthetic reasons, I wanted this to be open to match this being open, but I also obviously didn't want a soft lock and it was easier to put the, the hidden blocks there than to put another anti soft lock uh, muncher above the screen. So like, that was an example of like how, like I come up with like uh, an idea or two uh, for a section, and then I, like, expand out from it. Um, and then, like, for this, 
this last troll in the section was basically the the key door that's under there. Um, I basically I was like, okay, so you're gonna get back here again. I need this contraption down here, which by the way was crazy to create. I need this contraption to not do the light speed thing again because then it defeats the purpose of the bridge building troll. Um, so it's gonna have to do something different, and. I noticed that what it did different, if it didn't do the light speed thing, if I got rid of the clown car somehow, it ended up just dropping to that level. And I was like, that's a perfect spot for me to hide a door. So then in order to disguise that door, I put this pipe here with the conveyor under it, so that the first time you're here, this launcher would slide into position over the door when the cannon drops the first time, so that you don't actually see it the first time. Watch this cannon carefully when I start this, and you'll see what I mean. So here. This drops, and that cannon slid forward, and you can't see that door, because that cannon's already in position before this one starts its lightspeed journey. The second time, this stays in position because this remains solid because it doesn't drop into the clown car. And then I set it up that um, it will only drop all the way and reveal the key door and give you the key once you pass this point horizontally. So like, when, when you're over here, it won't give you the key, it won't do the thing. Um, and actually, when Carl played, there's something weird and janky about about the the setup for the contraption down here and i was never able to fully solve it so when carl played the door was actually already visible but lucky for me carl is carl blind and he still just jumped straight over here to the fake pipe and the slow boo death okay oh <gasps> Oh, fuck you! No, it's fake! I <laughs> it's funny to have him see the door in the moment later. The key. Yeah, it, it it worked out well, Rex, but it wasn't it wasn't planned that way. You know, I mean, I'm perfectly happy with how it worked out. Yeah, happy little accident, exactly. But yeah, there was always something janky about how this stuff spawns, and I mean, given how crazy this looks, I'm not surprised that there's something janky about it, but it was better in the final version than it was in any of the previous versions, at least. In the previous versions, if this janked out, what would actually end up happening is that this cannon would be completely gone, and this cannon was, like, floating, like, roughly here. What the hell happened here? What the hell happened here? <laughs> And it was just, like, super weird. Defender! And I really didn't like that. Uh, Defender! So, I managed to get it to not jank out that way. Jank. But apparently, there was still some jank there with the whole, you know, the door is visible when you get there thing. Jankity jank. But at least it was, like, less weird and less obvious. But luckily, it's in the level title. Jank spawned. <laughs> That's also why um, I have this extra hidden block behind there with a the potaboo, because you could end up in there in a way that, like, would softlock you if that wasn't there because of the previous jank. And I also couldn't reproduce it consistently enough to actually, you know, test what was causing it or test whether it was gone once I made the fix. So, um, so I left that in there just in case. So basically what I do is, like I said, I come up with the basic troll that the section is going to be showcasing. I cover it with other trolls, and then I build a section out from that, and then I build, you know, a bunch of these sections in a level, and when I start, I usually don't, like, have... The sections connected in any way so like i'll just connect i'll just create these sections like free floating somewhere in the level like this this pipe wouldn't start off actually going to or coming from anywhere the door didn't start off there once i have a bunch of sections created then i see you know which sections 
um, need to start with what kind of entry, and then I will arrange them in an order that makes sense for the level. So for example, this section, you can theoretically enter via either a pipe or a door. But the ending for this action, because of the whole door reveal thing, has to end with a door. There's also other considerations that go into the order in which I create a level. So, for example, anything that requires a lot of waiting or a difficult trick, I always try to put right before a checkpoint or right before the goal. The idea being that if it's going to involve a lot of waiting or a hard trick or some form of frustration, you only have to do it once. Because you have to remember that the things that are earlier in the section, you're going to be going over multiple times as you make progress and then die and then have to restart. So the earlier it is in the section, the more times you'll have to be doing it. The later it is in the section, the fewer times you're going to have to be doing it. Therefore, the stuff that you want players to not have to do as much, put near the end of the section. Likewise, anything that requires, like, a couple of times to look at it to figure it out, I try as much as possible to put near the beginning of a section. And I actually feel like I didn't do that great of a job with this particular level, but it seemed to have worked out anyway. But in general, it's it's a good rule of thumb. So for example, this, this section where you hit the bomb and then this thing crushes you and it's like, well, you may not have seen what came out of the launcher. You may not realize you can go up here, even though I gave you the mushroom hints. That is very close. Ah! What do you want me to do? What? I did need to do that. Why? Why? But how do I do anything? <laughs> Fucking bomb just came up at me. So what do- hang on, what do I do with the bomb? What am I doing? <laughs> what is going on? Oh, uh, I get it. That's so simple. This isn't gonna work the way I want it to work. Carl is confused. I freaking knew it. I'm not doing this right. This is gonna shoot at me, isn't it? How low? What? I knew it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, it shot at me, but... Yeah, well, unfortunately, I don't think I get it. I don't know what to do. What is going on? This isn't right. Can I do this fast, maybe? You can push this thing? I can get the bomb if I spin it instead. Maybe I spin it? But where do I... And then throw it up there? All right, let's see what's up here then. Spin jump has got to be the answer. Okay. What do I do with this? Maybe I just put it right there. No, that's not gonna work either. Oh, I get it. No, 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 no. I get it. I think I get this. I think I get this. I think I get it. Okay, well, the mole. Hold on. No, I don't. If I just wait. Don't wait. Maybe I do. No, he falls. He fucking falls. Oh, I can jump over it right there. I think. Could I jump over it? I think I need to duck jump over it. I think I can jump above it. Are you kidding me? I can't jump above it. Do I need the mushroom? What's a mushroom gonna do for me? Oh, do I need that mush? Could the launcher give me something? Could I possibly need the mush? That's right, it does. Oh, I'm an idiot! I'm an idiot! I'm an idiot! And then I can jump up. You get a mushroom and you jump through the swords! Holy shit! Okay, then I can jump up there. Man, it's so simple! Okay, I need the mush and jump up. Yo, did you do the exact same thing, Carl? Learning is happening. Please tell me I'm not the only one that's done. This was right after the checkpoint, you can see. So, like, you would get the checkpoint, and then you go through the pipe, 
And this is the first thing you see because it's the hardest thing in this section to figure out. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory, right? You come through this P-door, Muncher bounces in from the right into your face, you know, okay, I need to move left to, to dodge that. Like, it doesn't doesn't require that much, like, seeing it, analyzing it, figuring it out, etc. So, like, I try to do those kinds of things. I try to have those kinds of considerations to to make it a more pleasant experience for the player. Let me go through a couple more examples of, of sections and like what the, the basic idea for the section was and then um, how I expanded it out. Let's start here. This is the first section in the, the level, like, right? You start, you start the level, there was all these pipes. This was the only pipe you could actually go in. <laughs> Did I get inspired by Pig Pipe? Um, to be honest, G-Man, um, I actually did think of you when I was making this start of the level. I'm not gonna lie, I actually did think of you and your horrendously terrible pick-a-pipe level. <laughs> Dummy Fender was inspired by G-Man confirmed- I- I mean, I will- I will freely admit it, G-Man, something that you did in one of your levels did inspire something that I did in one of my levels. I will freely admit it, you can go announce it to the internet, that is perfectly fine. <laughs> that having been said, that's not the reason that I did it. I did it to be funny. I mean, there's only, what is it, 16 pipes here? So there's not that much to try, and there's really only the one pipe that you can actually go in. Subsequent to doing that, I realized that it's kind of like the, like, montage of, like, floating gun barrels that you have at the beginning of some Bond films. And because this level is sort of James Bond themed, I kind of like that idea also. I was worried that people would not like this seeming pick-a-pipe thing, but for most people it became clear very quickly that there was only the one pipe to go in, so I think that ended up fine. So then, there was that wiggler, if you tried to run from it and dodge it, it would hit you, if you went back in this pipe, there would be a humorous death. If this wiggler scares you and you go back down here... <laughs> There's the mushroom up there where you're like, well, that's just a death box, so you don't trust it, and then you go over here. Alright, that is 100% a semi-solid. And you start to get some pretty strong indications that maybe you wanted that mushroom. Okay, it's telling me to get the mushroom. <laughs> These are my hints. He's provided us with several hints to get the mushroom. That goes the wrong way, giving you an indication that you definitely wanted that mushroom. Maybe I didn't need the mushroom? <laughs> you damage boost across here, you go in here, and you start hitting the elevator button, you're like, Oh, the mole's coming, I'm not standing under there. Boom, moles. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so you stand here, those moles don't kill you. That mole, if you try to run from it, it will kill you. <gasps> no! <laughs> P-Switch wears off, you have the heavenly light here showing you the hint, it's like, oh, there's a hidden block under the saw. What? Hidden block? Oh, there's a- that must- it's a hint. It's a hint! You go over here to hit the hidden block, and it's like, oh, that's a mushroom, there's a P-Door here, there's an arrow, there's- oh, you can't see it because, well, that platform would have been gone. So, you'd see the little tip of the- the door right there. Oh, it's a freaking P-Switch door! Oh, it's the same thing as what's there! It's a P-Switch door! And then you actually... Oh, and that, that kills you if you don't go fast enough. Oh, there is something in that- OH! OH, SHIT! You go through the P-Door, ultimately going through the pipe. The premise for this section was... You can completely hide a door behind a saw and a skull platform on a track. Or even a skull platform not on a track. The truth is, it works with any kind of door. It only works in Super Mario World, though, because of the curved tops of the doors. And then, from that, I basically built this section out. So I was like, okay, so if there's gonna be a skull platform on a track, 
behind a saw, we should be doing something with the skull platform. So I was like, well, naturally, we can just have a track that's going across a bunch of saws, and obviously the platform goes the wrong way. The science. <laughs> Damn it. And then I was like, well, if it's going to go the wrong way, we're going to need a mushroom. So I came up with the the fake real mushroom box where it's like you go into it and it's like, oh, this this actually isn't, I can't get that mushroom. Oh, actually, I can't get the mushroom. Great. I don't think I want that. I'm not going to get that. Oh my god, what is going on? Maybe I need the mushroom? Do we get the mushroom? No. <laughs> oh! So these little blocks, when they move like that, can push you through the- <gasps> You do get the mushroom! Once I did that, I was like, well, what should happen next? Well, I if the door is the real solution, then I need some way to show you, hey, there's a door there that isn't obvious until after it's too late. Originally, I just had a wall here, and um, it was actually a yellow door, not a P door, and it just, like, this just led back around to here, which was nothing. But I, I didn't feel like that had enough of a punch. And, like, it was too easy to see the regular door. It was too easy to, to get into it. And it was just, like, it didn't feel clever enough to me because, like, you were just, like, you were down here under the spikes and it's like, okay, um, where, where am I? What am I going to do? Maybe you'd notice the, the top of the door. Maybe you wouldn't. So I, I changed it to a P door and I added, you know, having it hidden behind this launcher and whatever. But then I was like... I should also have it seem at first like you're supposed to go this way so that there's like something to the troll. So it's like, oh, I was doing all of this stuff and the door was right there the whole time. Oh, no, really? <laughs> like there's a hint on the right. We don't even go here. <laughs> so I added those falling moles. I'm pretty proud of the way that those worked out. And I added the hint here with the sound effect. Um, and I consider that particular sound effect to be very important in terms of communicating to the player, hey, there's a hint here. Like, usually many of the, the sound effects are kind of just for humorous effect or to, to add a little bit of a mood to an area of the level, but here I actually feel like that, that particular sound effect is crucial for understanding the level because it draws your attention completely to this hint that says, hey, there's a hidden block here. So then you go, you hit the hidden block, and then again, there's another sound effect there with the P door. Just show it to people again in case they didn't see it. There's another sound effect there. Well, it's not a P door anymore because I was screwing with it, but fine. There's the sound effect there. You hit this block. Oh, what happened to the sound effect? I... All right, I'm going to reload again because I, I've i been playing with stuff and some stuff has gotten screwed up. So you come down here. Sound effect for the P-Door there. You hit this block. Hey, where's the sound effect? I am so confused right now. There's def There was definitely the same sound effect on that block. I'm... I'm confused. Mario Maker's being weird. To be clear, that sound effect actually disappeared a number of times while I was working on the level. I didn't touch that launcher or the block or anything in this area between the previous version's upload and this one. But for some reason, something weird happened with Mario Maker, and it kept deleting that sound effect, and I didn't notice, and I must have accidentally uploaded it without that sound effect for the final version. The point is, you hit that block, it immediately tells you that the door is there, and lets you know what you were supposed to do in that section. This wiggler was actually added to cover the existence of these springs right here. And the purpose of those springs right there is very interesting. When Lilith was playtesting this level, she realized, um, alright, without this stuff here, 
she realized that if you went over here and, like, just inched all the way off of there, that mushroom would come this way, and you'd actually be able to get it. What actually happens is that it despawns the blue platforms, but not the solid blocks and not the semi-solid platforms, and therefore the mushroom just, like, phases through that because the mushroom also doesn't despawn. I added the wiggler and the springs because what happens with the springs there is that they also despawn. With the springs there, that um, thing that I was doing, like going over here, no longer happens. And the reason is because when you go over there, the springs despawn, the blue platforms despawn. Um, so without the springs, when the blue platforms despawn, this mushroom just goes down, comes this way. However, with the springs, that wall is now open, so once everything is despawned over here, the mushroom just goes that way and never comes to the right. And, like, it's not the end of the world if you get it that way rather than just jumping up into the box and getting it like a normal person. The problem is, though, that I also tend to like to avoid solutions that work but are unintended and are more annoying or more difficult than the actual intended solution because if somebody finds a solution then they're gonna end up not looking for another solution because they're gonna think that that is the solution and therefore they can get frustrated with the level because it's like well this is really, really annoying, why would you make me do this? And meanwhile, I'm sitting here in my Defender Control Center, and I'm like, I didn't make you do that, you're just being stupid. Um, so, you really, like, you, you don't want to be in that situation where you have people overcomplicating things in a way that, that makes it harder and more annoying. And therefore, I didn't want people to think that that despawn thing was the way to get the mushroom. So basically, I added those springs as a method by which to prevent the mushroom from coming that way and giving people a misleading impression of what they're supposed to do in the level. But just so that people don't question why the heck are there springs here, I also added the Wiggler, which ended up being a pretty decent troll and got a few people. Holy shit. Oh, I... <laughs> this pipe here, with the power-ups and the death, was actually the last thing that I added to the level. And originally, this was set up that you'd come out here, and there was just the sideways pipe trick, so that you couldn't actually go back into the pipe. I only added that after changing the ending to the level, so that I actually had an extra pipe to work with. And I was like, I may as well use this. Where Where's a good place to use it? I may as well use it here, somebody could get scared back into that pipe. Oh no. <laughs> See ya. Wait, can I get back up? I think I can go back up, can I? Nope. <laughs> wow. I haven't seen that slow-mo done before. <laughs> This, this is the door that led from behind the light speed launcher, actually. You go through here, you get a mushroom, you look over there, and you're like, well, this is too high to jump. Looks like my only choice is to run straight through. You run straight through, and you see all of this stuff end up in there. It's like another mushroom and these note blocks. So you would have been able to get that mushroom damage boost again to wait for the note block to go up there. Let's go. Be a brave boy. I don't go in here. So you'd be up here. You'd jump here. You can actually miss that checkpoint. Oh my god. Oh my god, no. But if you miss it... You get a mushroom, and it lets you... Alright, hang on. Let me show you. If you miss it, if you're small, you can't actually get enough height to touch it. But then you would get that mushroom, 
and it would still let you touch it. Oh my god, no! Why did I not hit right? Why didn't you go for the CP after you got it? After you got the much? Well, I, I didn't actually think that it would work. I thought maybe... Can I get the... Oh! Would I have been high enough? I actually thought I wouldn't have been high enough to hit it. Although, if you did that, you can't at that point actually complete the level without dying. Oh, cool. Cool. Nice defender? Oh, not nice defender. What happens is you get the checkpoint. That's actually a progressive. So you have the fire flower. That gives you the two damage boosts because now those mushrooms that you used the first time aren't there. And then from now on, when you spawn at the checkpoint, that's going to be a mushroom. But those two mushrooms are going to be there so you can always get back up here. I don't know how that happened. Once you got up here, you would get into that section. Those do that bounce and then they pop up and then they shoot a fire at you but you can't go through anyway, and it's like, oh, I was just supposed to go through and go down. If you run at full speed here, they pop you up there. I think I'm just gonna bail. <laughs> you'd get down here, and then you'd be like, what does this P-switch do? If you run full force at it, it'll remove this launcher and you'll run into the muncher. If you don't, you go through here, you go in the door, and then this shows, I set this up to show people, and you can go through this door as many times as you want while the P-Switch is active, um, but I set this up to show people that there was this POW there that gets bounced up there. Oh! 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 There was a note block underneath it, it's above the level. Didn't think the POW was that good of a troll. Okay. Um... That's fair. I mean, if you didn't think that was that good of a troll, that's cool. Um, it's a matter of taste. Some people enjoy different kinds of things as trolls, and I like to include a variety in my levels. So that was more of a, a puzzly, like, haha, you missed it, troll. And, of course, we have the... This troll. Oh, come on, it didn't work. So I thought I actually set this up that you couldn't speed past this, but yeah, so the the sideways thing comes out there. There we go. Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, Carl managed to, side, to, to speed past that. And now I can go in the pipe. Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. And then I just did, so I don't know what changed since I uploaded it, but um, I thought I'd set it up that you couldn't go fast enough to get past it, but whatever. <laughs> Dude, the level, he, he went in the editor and changed the level between now and three minutes ago, like, that never happened before. Someone ban this hacker, please. This basically started off, um... <laughs> Honestly, the main troll of this section was the pal that Steve-O is not as much of a fan of. The the main I, the main troll that I was setting up in this section was this pal. Also on my list was what's going on with the saws over here, but I added that later. But basically, I set up the the thing with the pal going off screen, and then I was like, well, I want to have something to give meaning, give give an alternate reason why there is this mushroom platform with the spikes next to it, and why you can get up above the screen here. Oh, that's what that's for. No! <laughs> Note to self, hitting the pow doesn't stop that from happening. That was to cover the whole thing with the pow. So down here, I need some reason to hit the pow, so that's that muncher and then i needed some way to show you the pow so i added the p switch removing the thing sending you in the door which sends you up here to show you that the pow is there no. was that there the whole time i also realized that i could add the the winged muncher coming sideways out of the pipe as an additional troll for once you hit the pow over here Mostly, this is because I needed 
some way to set up a number of things. Number one, this was added pretty late in the level development. I'd always already come up with pretty much all the sections for the level, and I knew that I needed to have a checkpoint here. I wanted to have a checkpoint after this door, you know, is the end of that whole crazy launcher section. I wanted a checkpoint. But I also needed it to be that once you spawned this POW, you couldn't despawn it because the note block that was on the track, or whatever it was that was gonna send the POW up there, was gonna be gone or potentially be at a different spot on the screen and I needed there not to be spawn jank. I needed you not to be able to despawn the POW without despawning whatever popped it up there and then respawn the POW and then it's just sitting there and it ruins the troll. These one ways prevent you from ever going back beyond the spawn point for that POW and I'd had this idea for a while of like it was on my list of basically having a section that has saws that you run through using the damage boost and that the real strat was to wait between the saws for something to happen. So I was playing around with it and it worked out pretty well here. Also, originally, I didn't have this second note block here. Um, and I also originally had these tracks, not like that. I had originally had it... Originally I had had it set up like this. If anybody was annoyed by the setup the way that it ultimately was, you should have seen it when it was like this, because basically you had one shot to catch that note block as you were bouncing off of it and do a full jump, or else you were dead. And I did not like that at all, so I ultimately set it up the way that it is now with the, with the tracks. This solid here, so that you can't go over the screen, is also there um, for the same reason of not being able to despawn that POW. I also realized that if I'm going to have that there, I need a reason to go left. Checkpoint's the perfect reason to go left. And I wanted to make it that... Hang on, let me reload this again, just so that I, I put it back to the way it was. I wanted to make sure that you always had to go for the checkpoint before going this way. Please be the right way. It is, because you can jump over note blocks and not the gray blocks. Because I didn't want people to, like, not trust the checkpoint and then keep going, because I've had that occasionally in levels, and it's always, um, really kind of sad when people do that. It's like, you're doing all of this extra work when you could have just had that checkpoint. I set it up with this bomb thing here. So that bomb is under that block the first time, but that block immediately blows up. So the bomb isn't going to be there until the next time you spawn it, so that you have to go around that way. And also when you spawn at the checkpoint, it blows that up, and then when you go in the door, it does the second time and blows it up. So either way, when you're coming here before the checkpoint and getting it, or when you spawn at the checkpoint, it always spawns that twice, and then the second time it has the bomb to blow up those blocks. And if you're here without having that bomb blown up those blocks, you can't actually get over the top. And that's what those munchers are for also, is the anti-soft lock, so that if you came up here- well, alright, so this muncher here is for the anti-soft lock. This one here is just for symmetry, and you'll notice that um, once it's blown up, these two hard blocks and these two note blocks are symmetrical, even though they're not the same kind of block. So I wanted to force you to go this way. And the truth is, I actually made a mistake, and you are not entirely forced to go left. Um, and someone actually did this, but then didn't actually skip the checkpoint, so it was fine. But... Let's say, the first time you're here, so um, I changed that from being a key door because you come through that, you had the key, you come through that from the other section, you go here, no, that's not what you do, I'm, I'm dumb. So you came through that door, you're here. That has already blown up over there, off, off screen that way. If you go back through the door, 
you can't because it's blocked by that launcher, that's fine. But now you're actually here the second time, that bomb is there, and theoretically, you actually can go up this way and completely skip the checkpoint. This other muncher, which is spawned under the block there, is actually there for a very interesting reason, which is the hint room under here. When you don't hit that pal, and instead you go down here and you go into this hint room, I wanted the only thing that you get your attention drawn to to be that pal that was right there. So you see this pal, but there that muncher is stopping that bomb from coming because there was a previous version where that muncher wasn't there. So without that muncher there, you would end up going through this door and you see the pal, but then this bomb would also walk down there, and you'd be like, wait, is that something? And I didn't want people to be looking at that bomb and not notice the pow, so I added that extra muncher. This... Oh, get out of the way. This hidden block with the fish in it, which um, very few people have hit, is actually not there as a troll. That is actually an anti-soft lock, because um, Bishy found that... Uh, Anti-cheese anti-soft lock. Um, although I think it's not a soft lock anymore, but it would still be cheese. When Bishy was playing this, he actually discovered that when you come over here... Oh, I... I need to reload this again because I've now screwed up the entire section while showing you things underneath other things. I'm probably not going to be able to nail the move, but I'll at least show it to you. Basically, when Bishy was playing this, he realized that if you get... Okay, so if you get a perfect jump, um, as the... As the nope lock and mushroom are coming down over here, you can actually grab the mushroom and then get a perfect jump onto that nope lock in midair somewhere around here and bounce up there without having to lose the mushroom again. So if you ended up up here with the mushroom, I didn't want you to get through to the next section with the mushroom, you'd get here and you can't actually get under this wall while big. You jump back up and that fish would... Uh, would smallify you. Smallify, yes. You could have just hit the muncher, but the fish is funnier. The reason that that used to be a ch uh, a soft lock rather than just cheese is because originally this section was not at this point in the level. It was kind of an optional section at the end, and I'll show you that in a bit. But originally this pipe used to lead right here. And there wasn't this crushy block, there wasn't all of that stuff. There was just that pipe. It was blocked if you didn't wait for the P-switch, which is another reason why I moved that other section, because I didn't like forcing the player to wait for the P-switch, because it's relatively early. It's kind of like in the middle of the section, but it's not close enough to the end that I felt comfortable with it. If you ended up big here, you could not get under here. The way this used to look, this wasn't a note block, that wasn't a conveyor, it was basically... Um, it was basically just this, but with a pipe instead of that door. And the pipe just led back to... the, the other side was blocked with the muncher. So if you ended up here big, you were just softlocked, because you would go back in that pipe, and it wouldn't let you out the other side, it would just spit you back out here, you would know where to go. So that's why I had, it to, I had to add that as a D-cheese, de D-softlock, de but then, since I changed the level, it was no longer a softlock, but it's still a D-cheese. You can actually make that big, it's just really hard. Uh, I have heard that, Foxes. I have not personally seen or been able to accomplish it, and the truth is, that's fine with me, because in a troll level like this one, nobody is going to expect that getting through there like that is the intended strat. Also, once I, once I changed it to have the conveyor, I don't think it's possible anymore. Easier in new soup? Inter oh, because you can do a twirl. Interesting. So one of the reasons I moved this section to be at this point of the level was because I didn't like the P-switch weight. And, like, you're gonna come through here with the P-switch active. 
put that over there just to, to show you. So you'd come through here with the P-Switch active, and this gives you something to do while the P-Switch is active, rather than just having to wait for the P-Switch, which, which the other one was. Like, if you went in the pipe from the previous section with the P-Switch active in the previous version, you would just die. And I didn't like having basically 10 seconds of waiting in the middle of the section for no reason. So here, for this section, you only really have to wait for the P-Switch the first time, assuming you're not a moron. Because only a moron would assume, hey, I'm giving you all of these shinies, and go into this box. What the fuck is this? I am dead. Look at all those shinies down there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of shinies down there. <laughs> only a complete moron would think, hey, I'm giving you this, and not, this is going to be Kaizo blocked. So, when Carl did this, he actually went in here and then died to those fires because it's Kaizo blocked. And in fact, the entire thing is Kaizo blocked. Only the first time you need to wait for the P-Switch to wear off so that those aren't coins. So you think you're outsmarting the troll because it's like, well, there's nowhere to go this way because those are blocks. Except that there is because this P-Switch you can actually step on and you're like, haha, I'm outsmarting the troll by just hitting this P-Switch. You hit the P-Switch and it's like, you can't go in this pipe? And it's like, no, there's actually a door behind that P-Switch and PAL that are perfectly hidden, and now you're dead. What do I do here? Do I just avoid Shinyville, USA, Population Me? Probably? I didn't... <gasps> I did! I didn't! What the fuck?! Oh my god, dude! It's like, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> that was well hidden. So you actually do go in the box. Oh, this is blocking it. That's why I couldn't see it. This room was originally an alternate path near the ending, and I'll show you what I mean when I get to the ending. But I liked it too much, and I disliked the P-Switch weight too much to leave it as just an optional room. So I changed it, and I made it part of the level. Your natural inclination is probably to get on the Yoshi, probably hit the P-Switch, and take some item through the door. The room is supposed to make you think, there's no way you go in here because it's giving me all the things. And then it is, but then I needed some way to take them all away. So, basically, this room, the only purpose... There's no troll here. The only purpose to this room is to... Um, de-itemize you from the previous room. You have to take something with you. If you don't take anything, you can't get through this room. You can take any item. You can take a POW, um, or a P-Switch, or a Spring. The POW, obviously, you can throw immediately and just get through. With either the P-Switch or the Spring, you put it on the conveyor, and it bounces that contraption which hits the POW. With the P-Switch, you have the added benefit that it hits the P-Switch before the POW, so it turns these coin blocks, and it forces you to not be able to go through this door until the P-Switch is over. And I need that for the troll in the next action, because if the P-Switch was active when you went through this door, it would completely ruin the troll. The same thing would happen with the spring, just with the difference that the P-Switch wouldn't, wouldn't go off. Like, the spring would go down there, bounce up there, hit the bomb, blow up the pow, great. There was actually a cheese in this section in a previous version, where if you put a pow or a spring down there, this hole here wasn't as wide, and you could actually re-tongue it through the wall with Yoshi, so I had to fix that and re-upload at some point. You can grab the coins with y No, you can't, G-Man. Um, hmm. I mean, maybe if you've got good timing. Let me... Let me actually test that, because you might be right and there might be cheese here. Uh... Well, G-Man found some cheese. Alright, I'm... I, I, I'm not re-uploading this. Carl's already played it, and people have seen it, and whatever. Like, if you figure out that cheese, you deserve to dodge the troll in the next section. So what happens with Yoshi? If I was really smart, I could have eaten that coin.
Okay, I gotta be real careful. I don't want to go in there. Okay, let's go. Is there any way to filter out the smug emotes? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm an idiot! The, I didn't get- I didn't respawn the Munchad. Hey, Werewolf. <laughs> hey, Laxa. Why am I bringing- Why am I bringing Yoshi every time? Did you just see that?! You can skip the troll! So then you go through this door. And this crushy block doesn't actually kill you, it just makes you small and sends Yoshi running. Which hits this note block, drops this muncher. And the truth is, that's not an absolute, like, you're now screwed. Because you can just go back through the door and despawn the muncher. God fucking crap damn shit. Wait. If that muncher wasn't there, this would also de Yoshi you because there's no way to get Yoshi through this conveyor part. Oh, yeah, he stops. I've been wasting my time. <laughs> And the note block makes it that you can't have him running on the conveyor because a P switch will be activated in the next section, and I'll show you that in a second. The point is just to strip you of all of the items and power ups and Yoshis that I gave you in the previous spot. So then you come through here, and you're like, well, I can go this way into this obvious kill box, or I can go down here to that pipe that's completely open. I want to go to the right, but I'm scared. Oh, I should have fucking done it. <laughs> I should have fucking done it. And this actually uses the same technique that I used in my previous level. <laughs> if you have a stack of munchers or anything solid, so munchers, chomp stumps, with, with the chomps attached, Thwomps will work, although they're bigger, so they move slower. Cannons, I think, will do this also, if I'm not mistaken. Launchers, uh, although, again, launchers are taller, so they'll go slower. This platform, it goes down and then it shoves these guys up under this block. So basically, like, they're all, like, squished together, but they're still in a stack. And then as soon as this block gets removed, that stack wants to reform itself as quickly as possible. So you get sudden muncher stack. So then if you're like, well, there are techniques for this kill box not actually being a kill box, you go in here. And in fact, there is that bomb that comes. Oh, that looks pretty correct going to the right. I hear, I hear a bomb. I bet this is actually where you fucking go. I know it! And then you go this way. And we have the message. Welcome to the world's biggest Carl box! God damn it, dude! No! Mr. Sagan, <laughs> I expect you to die! <laughs> and then when you get to the bottom of this whole thing, of course, you end up in this pipe, in here, where at first it seems just like a soft lock. You can also do this crazy thing to get stuck in here. But eventually this star and cloud come, push you up through here, and you're back to this slow fire bar section where you have to kill yourself slowly. This is horrible! No. Oh. Oh. Oh! Oh! Go like this, and it comes after you. I hope they go away. Ah! <laughs> I'm 
chat. I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought they were just going to fall down. And if you run away from it, you end up in this kill box also. Does that help me? <gasps> Maybe I do! Maybe I do go down there! And the fun thing is, if you already know about this kill box, because you went in there, you know, willingly the first time, well, you can't kill yourself early. You are now doomed to the slow death with the fire bar. The way that I designed this section, my basic thought process began with this muncher stack trick. This muncher stack trick is actually something that I came up with pretty much the week that I got the game. I never actually used it in anything until my previous level, although I actually created this particular section before my previous level, but I didn't have anything to round out the rest of the level, and this was already created in Super Mario World, and my, my previous level was Super Mario Bros. 1, and it had to be because of the Saw Troll. All right. Is that the flagpole? So this this particular troll move is probably the the troll move that has been in development for the longest cuz like I said I came up with the original idea the first week I got the game but my original setups for trolling with it weren't weren't particularly um deceptive so it took me until now to come up with a setup for it that actually worked well. Originally, this message said, Welcome to the world's biggest Carl box. Uh, it was something like, P.S. You wanted to go in that pipe. Referring to this pipe. And I actually changed the message once it was Bond-themed to be, you know, Now, Mr. Sagan, I expect you to die because, you know, it's Bond reference. And it was more thematic, and I think it, worked out better and more humorously, especially given Carl's imp impersonation of the character as he was reading it. That was, that was pretty good. Now, Mr. Dragon, I expect you to die. There's not a whole lot to this section in terms of what I was talking about earlier with, you know, trolls covering the other trolls. This one is pretty much just a, a straight up, like... Bloop, that thing trolls you, and then bloop, that thing chases you into there, and then bloop, that bomb goes off, and then bloop, you go into the box, and I don't know why I keep saying bloop. My, my entire creative process is just that. I create small sections based on a core troll idea that I had for that section, and then I build them out basically enhancing or disguising the main troll for the section. Um, this the, the section that, that we're looking at right here is also another excellent example of this. So you come through the pipe, and it's like, heartbeat sound effect, pick a mushroom. Well, obviously you need a mushroom because there's a key up there, there's a saw that you need to damage boost through for the key. Either mushroom, well... I waited too long because I was talking, but whatever. Either mushroom you pick, it gives you the buzz sound effect, makes you do the boot dance, just to wait long enough so that you see this block, which is the main troll in this section. Okay, well, nothing's landing on me. Oh! Wait! I do have to wait that long for the... <laughs> because that block's not the solution either. Um, oh, actually, this isn't. This setup isn't going to work right because um, I didn't do the um, other section first. So th those blocks would be gone because you spawn here; those blow up the first time you're there. The reason for having that set up that it blows up some blocks the first time and it only activates the P-switch the second time is so that when you're spawning at the checkpoint, it doesn't immediately activate a P-switch. Oh, one more thing. The entire purpose of this section with the saw and the key and the key door is to make you think that you need a mushroom, even though you don't, in order to set up the block troll. 
So you actually, you're here and you wait for this block, you hit it, it buzzes and shows you both green and red to let you know that this is wrong. And the truth is, this didn't work out communicating as well as I had hoped it would. People thought that, that buzz was just a joke and it was like, haha, it's a one-up, but really it's a super mushroom and like the buzz was just a, a joke, like momentarily, haha, I tricked you, no, I didn't really trick you. What? <laughs> that like <laughs> I saw I saw green for a second there. So it didn't end up really communicating it well, but um I added some other stuff to communicate it better so it worked out fine. What does that say? Don't mushroom? So then when you jump here, you don't actually get that key. You don't actually need the mushroom to boost through the saw because this wall opens up. You get the key, you go in the door. And no matter how fast you run this way, you can't get the checkpoint because those blocks will be blocking you and crushing you. It's not gonna kill me. No, it is gonna kill me! There's a one way there! The blocks that you hit down here were the same blocks that were up here. The bottom one's a hidden block, so if you didn't hit them, you can just pass straight through them. If you did hit them, then they're solid and they crush you. And I wanted to set it up that you just barely don't touch the checkpoint if you've hit those blocks. What did I do wrong? The fuck is this? And this is what I meant earlier when I said I think I didn't do as good a job as usual putting the things that might take longer to figure out earlier in a section because like i said this is right before the checkpoint but because of the nature of this troll it had to be right before the checkpoint and i also didn't expect it to be this hard for people to figure out i was honestly surprised because i give you a number of indications number one i give you the buzz when you hit it down here number two the fact that it's both a green and red mushroom at the exact same time should be an indication that it's two blocks layered and then when you get up here you see the two blocks coming toward you and they are hit blocks. This is, I, I'm not in any way blaming the players for this. This was my personal oversight as a level creator. My boss refers to it as cursed knowledge. Um, it's basically the problem when you are so intimately familiar with something that you yourself are creating that you don't have the ability to entirely see how other people are going to interpret it. In a troll level especially, that's kind of crucial. And I like to think that I do a decent job of anticipating you know, what people are going to think when they see things, but I'm not always perfect, and I will fully admit that I overestimated that in this case. But luckily, with the addition of the don't mushroom up here, as long as people aren't Carl blind and don't miss this entirely, um, it seems to have fixed that oversight anyway. I actually went through a couple of styles of hints up here before I settled on the don't mushroom thing. No music block, no music block, no music block? It's kind of tough. You have to put yourself in the, the player's position. You have to think, what would I do if I was a player and didn't know that this was this? And, and it's, it's really hard to do a lot of the time. So basically the main troll of this section was just this block thing. And honestly, I think that this was... One of the most clever trolls in this level, if not the most clever troll in this level. Wait, you don't even need that mushroom. Wait! You don't even need the fucking mushroom! I'm waiting for nothing! Don't. Don't collect the mushroom? Oh shit! <laughs> the fact that if it's if it's not hit. You can get by it no problem. If it is hit, then you can't, and you're the one who hit it. Hold on, I don't need... I can be small. I can be small? What the hell? I 
can be small. Those are the same blocks. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. But um, it, se it, it seems to have gone over a lot of players' heads because I think they didn't really realize what was going on there. They just like realized, oh, I didn't need the mushroom, try it without the mushroom, somehow it worked. Also, originally, I had this checkpoint like this, and that was annoying people, because with it upside down, you start there, you can immediately go into the pipe. With it here, you basically had to run right every single time before going left into the pipe, and it was annoying. Oh, God. Watch me die a million times to this because I keep forgetting about it. Oh, God. <laughs> Stay to the right. All right. Is the instant death really necessary? This checkpoint one troll actually used to be a heck of a lot different. Or the, the reverse checkpoint one troll, I should say, because I don't know if, if everybody here saw the level. The way the level ends, let me let me show you just the ending to the level. So, um, well, whatever. You come out of this pipe, that blows up. If you stand there for too long, you get shot by a mushroom, just a jump scare, fine. You go down here, and you're like, okay, there's a mushroom up here, there's a saw, there's the goal, what could go wrong? Well, the first thing that could go wrong, fire in your butt. Wait, maybe I can... Get pooped on by potaboos. So I set this up to look like there is, you know, this semi solid under here. There actually isn't. This is perfectly safe. That pipe goes nowhere. But when you damage boost through the saw, whoops, if you go down here, there's a wall back there, and there are so there's hidden blocks there you can't actually get out. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? If you go this way, there is actually a pipe hiding under the goal. You go through here back to checkpoint one. No checkpoint one trolls? No, apparently not. This is gonna be a monstrous CP1 if I have to do this shit again. <laughs> please, please, please. No! FUCKING SHIT, DUDE! WHY WAS IT NOT THAT?! I FEEL LIKE I DID THAT SO GOOD! But instead of staying down there, it shoots you up through this whole... ...wiggler party. No. <laughs> Wait. Wait. What happened? And now... ...you're kind of... ...in here... ...and... ...only way out is this bomb. <laughs> Aha! Yes! <gasps> what happened? We're still good? Even if you get hit by that bomb once, you have that shelmet, so you can't die. There's actually no way to die in here. And I wanted to make it that way because I wanted this to be a fake CP1, but that you actually collect the CP1, but I wanted there to be no way to die because basically for the same reason that you want to avoid key death. I mean, you can always time out. Um, key death, you can also time out, but, but short of timing out, there's actually no way to die in here. Once you do that, you go through the pipe, you come up, you get the goal. Yes! Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh, please. Please! Yes! Oh my god! Oh, thank you, Benevolent Defender! <laughs> and it's like... Squish! Pop! Squish! Bounce! Slide down the hole. Uh... Whoa, that's weird. <laughs> Oh, he goes, woo, and then pieces out. <laughs> that was a cool ending. Mario was just like, woo, see ya. <laughs> yeah, motherfucking duh. Hell yeah. Um, 
I'm actually super proud of that little contraption at the end because I think it's hilarious and like I'm far more proud of it than than I have any right to be. Oh god, that ending was so good. Point is, um that used to actually look very different. Uh let me see if I actually have an old version. Yeah, I do have an old version here. That actually used to look like this. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> What the hell is this? There was this cloud block for reasons that n no longer exist in the final version. One of the, the problems with the way that it used to be set up was that you could actually die. Uh, so, for example... Um, you could die like that. Uh, if you duck and then didn't get out of the way of the muncher. There's also... Before, whoops, there used to be a hidden block back here behind the saw, so that you couldn't, um, like, when you're coming through here, um, you couldn't just jump up there and, through the damage boost and win immediately. The problem was, when you came back through the pipe, if you jumped immediately, you'd just get crushed against that block. I didn't like the fact that, that you could die, um... The truth is, Tadius, um, I hope that's the right way to pronounce his name, was the one who suggested that I redo this. The reason this was set up like this is that originally I had two ways to get to this, and they, I wanted them both to make you win. So originally I had a door here, so I needed this setup to be something that would accommodate both this door and the pipe, which is why I had, like, with the springs and this whole crazy setup like that. But then I changed the level to not have the door there. And this is actually after I removed the the door that led back here, but before I changed it to the better setup. And like it's interesting. When you're when you're creating levels, sometimes you'll like create something in a specific way to accomplish a particular goal. And then your goal will change because you've changed something else, and you won't revisit the way you set that thing up to accomplish that goal until something inspires you to do so. So, f so this is an example of it. I also, I think I disguised it better because in that version, like, you can definitely tell that there's something weird going on up there. In this version, though, I... At least in my opinion, like, you get here, and it's just like, alright, there's just, like, a wiggler party going on, like, whatever, that's just weird defender aesthetics. The defender doesn't actually know how to do aesthetics, so he substitutes it with random wigglers. There's a lot of wiggler booty going on up there. Let me remove some of the craziness here to show you what's actually involved in the contraption and what's not. So, if I remove... This wiggler, this wiggler, this wiggler, and this wiggler, which are not really involved in the contraption. Um, so what you're left with here is basically this shelmet on a track, and this pow, and the muncher. So basically what happens is that when you come from over here, that muncher is always going to already be up there, and it is solid, so it's going to block you. You can't do that damage boost thing that I was that I originally had that hidden block there for, um, because you can't get past that muncher. Like even with the damage boost, you you just can't get up past that muncher. When you come through the pipe, this pops you up perfectly to line up with the shell, and then in the space of three blocks, you get here. The shell goes on your head, you get here, you break this block, and then you get here, you hit the POW, killing these two wigglers, so that there's no death potential from those wigglers. Once you're there, you're up here, and then there's this contraption with the Yoshi and the note block to break you through this stuff, and then, then you get out. So the saw is basically there to remove your... Um, checkpoint mushroom. So, like, as soon as you get the checkpoint, you lose the mushroom, so you can't get into the pipe big. But the rest of the wigglers are there to basically cover the shelmet and the pow. And, like, even when you spawn here, you can only see that shelmet, like, the corner of it for the 
barest second before um, the Wiggler covers it. And, like, there's so much Wiggler going on up there that you're unlikely to see it. The POW is completely invisible when you're in gameplay. So um, I think this, like, covers the fact that there's an escape route there a lot better than the old version did. The main troll here is the troll that I had for a while, which, okay, I'm going to remove that. That launcher, hang on, let me just show you. That launcher never actually spawns. That launcher is just there to cover up the pipe in the level art so that you don't see the ending troll coming. The main troll in this section that I'm enhancing is the pipe hidden behind the goalpost troll. And basically, because pipes are two blocks wide and the goalpost can only cover one block, I have this launcher on the track that falls down from above so that it covers the back end of the pipe so that you can't see the pipe at all. But then I was like, well, I need to have some excuse for that launcher actually existing. So then I added this thing with the bomb. And then it's like, well... You wait for the bomb, the launcher crushes the bomb, that's fine, then it shoots a thing. Originally I had that shooting fire, but there was too much spaghetti happening, and it was like, not a clever troll. It was just like, haha, now there's a launcher here shooting fire at you, and you're dead. So I just turned that into a fake out. There's actually four launchers here that merge into one. I added this to enhance the existence of the launcher to put the extra launchers back here that shoot from the middle of the launcher that you can't see. Originally, this section was a little bit different. Originally, this whole thing with the mushroom didn't exist, this saw wasn't here, the semi-solid wasn't here. Instead, it was basically... Um, it was basically... looked like... Um, basically looked like this, and I had a pipe here. Also, this this ending contraption over here wasn't there. I had some arrows here, like, pointing down and then into the pipe. Both the pipe behind the goal and this pipe went somewhere. So, the pipe behind the goal went to the CP1 fakeout that ends the level, and this pipe originally went to this section, and then that door used to be a P-switch door. That door used to be a P-switch door that led above the first checkpoint with the, the CP1 fake out. So you could basically beat the level by going in either of these, but you only got to that um, like treasure room through this bottom one. And like I said, I didn't like the P-switch wait between the, the two sections where I added that, and I also thought that the hidden door over there was too good of a troll to only be found sometimes. You didn't get the shock of like, holy crap, there is a pipe hiding behind the goal, which was, as I said, the main troll in this section that I was setting up. So I rearranged it. This gives you enough of a sense that like there are alternate ways that you could have tried that the pipe is a, a good enough shock. Because like, assuming that you didn't go up here into that pipe, or try that pipe or whatever. And assuming that you didn't go down here into this area, when, when you go into that pipe, your first thought is like, oh, I should have gone to touch the goal from down here, or oh, maybe that pipe led somewhere, or whatever. So, like, it feels like a real back to CP1, even though it's not. This one I'm also particularly proud of, this troll. I'm not. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> no, dude. When you duck, oh my god, this is so good. When you duck, skewers can't hit you. But <laughs> I think as soon as I unduck, I'm gonna die. Yeah, I'm gonna die. I love that I added the party music in this spot, where it's just like, we're partying because you are now trapped under here, you can't undock, you, you're like, 
this is where you live now. You 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 can't move. And I just like I love how it's like you have no choice at that point. This used to be one block higher, and it was for no good reason. Um, like I was thinking, my thinking was basically like, okay, so you'd come through here, you'd wait for that, that would go up. And you come through here and it's like, oh no, I'm going to lose my platform, and then just the mushroom platform was under it. Um, but that wasn't a particularly good troll, and what it forced you to end up doing was you'd have to go up here, and then you'd have to wait here for them to go up, and then you'd have to do this stupid little jump to get into it, and it was just annoying. One thing to to note in terms of just the creation of the level and the, the effectiveness of... The, the trolling, you'll notice that when you when you come out here, this thwomp always comes down, so that even when you get trapped under here, this shows you what you did wrong and what you can do right the next time. I reiterate this over and over again because it's an important point, but basically the golden rule of troll levels is that the player make more progress than frustration. So it's always important to leave the player feeling like they have an option to explore and that they either know what to do next or have an idea of what to try next. <laughs> You'd hold right before seeing the blocks. Yeah, so this didn't work on everybody because different people have different psychologies. And therefore, some of the people got scared by the skewer and tried running away from it before seeing the blocks. Um, but other people, like, they end, they end up here, and they're more able to take in everything, and they realize, okay, these blocks are going to be broken through by the skewer, but the skewer is going to kill me unless I duck. Um, and then they duck, and of course, end up underneath the skewer. <sighs> <laughs> but that's the thing, not every troll will work on every player, and that's alright, as long as people are having fun and being amused, and some trolls work on every player, I consider it a successful troll level. And the truth is, every troll in this level, aside from, I think, one, worked on Carl. That is... Pretty much the entire level. That was my thought process for creating the level. I hope that was a bit of insight into kind of the 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 little tricks that I've learned along the way of you know how to make things simultaneously not frustrating for the player while also you know getting inside their head and tricking them in humorous ways i hope that's helpful i hope that that's interesting to at least some of you out there it's generally a bad idea to use obscure tech as the solution for a troll using obscure tech as the solution to a troll is generally a very bad idea in a troll level because you're basically leaving the player wondering what the heck am I supposed to do? Whereas using obscure tech to trigger a troll is an excellent idea in a troll level because a player isn't expecting obscure tech to happen because it's like, it's obscure. So... That, so, like, this unexpected thing happens and trolls the heck out of them. But when when it's the solution to the troll, you can't expect the player to figure it out. And, like I said, good trolling is about making the player laugh and ultimately allowing them to progress and not get frustrated. So, you should always try to make it obvious as much as possible to the player what exactly it is that they were supposed to be doing next after you've killed them. Um, really good job of, of showing what to actually do after you fall for a troll. Thanks, Steva. I, I mean, the truth is, I... I mostly agree with that now, although that wasn't true for b the section before the first checkpoint, I feel like. A lot of people had trouble with this part right here, not realizing to not hit the blocks that fall. Adding this hint helped a lot. 
but there were still people who who were confused by it and didn't know what to do. There were a few people who had trouble finding the P door over here a couple of times. One person totally missed this hint, even though I had the sound effect there. Although I, I don't know if they were playing with sound on, so that might have been a thing. The one other section that people had trouble with was this one over here, with the POW over here. There were a few people who saw the POW and didn't realize, oh hey, that was there the whole time. There were people who were like trying to hit it from there. So like, this, this part I feel like also ended up a little more obscure than I would have liked. Those were the, the places in the level that um, I think I didn't do quite as good a job of saying, hey, this is what you were actually supposed to do. But for the most part, I feel like I did a decent job of that. Do you have any new Super Mario Bros. levels? I don't have any new soup levels. I've been considering what to do with a new soup troll. The problem is that new soup has too many mechanics, and it's really hard to de-cheese, especially at troll level, because it has so many mechanics and so many different ways that you could potentially cheese things. I generally stick to the other three, and I generally only give you as many mechanics as I need to for the trolls that I'm doing. So like, I will, I will pick which level I'm doing, based on, or which style I'm doing, based on the trolls that are in the level and what you need to accomplish them. On my master list of troll ideas that I work off of, I basically have it organized into sections where it's like, um, trolls that will work in SMB1, trolls that will work in either SMB1 or SMB3, trolls that only work in SMB3, trolls that work in either 3 or Super Mario World, trolls that work only in Super Mario World, and then trolls that work in any of those three. And the truth is, I haven't seen any mechanics that I found useful for trolling that wouldn't work in any of those three, but would work in New Soup. So, like, maybe eventually I'll see something that will only work in New Soup and I'll make a New Soup troll level, but I don't and I haven't because I haven't needed to. Sprites don't hide very well in new soup. That's true also, Steva. Um, so if you find new mechanics, it'll be fresh. Yeah, that's that's also true, J-Man. The problem is finding good mechanics. <laughs> you put so much more thought into levels than I do. <laughs> Steva. Um, I mean, I I'm a thinker by nature, and it's what I do. I, I spend far more time than I'd like to admit analyzing people, analyzing behaviors, analyzing things that I've said or done. I agonize at night over, you know, a stupid comment that I made in high school kind of a thing. Like, it's it's actually kind of not the best, but um, it's, it's part of my nature as a thinker. And there wasn't a mole there. Ignore the mole. <laughs> Druid. <laughs> Yes, indeed. How can you ignore a mole? <laughs> for, for anybody who doesn't know, Explosive Druid, who is also an amazing streamer, is uh, a huge fan of moles and includes moles in every one of his levels. He's also a great level creator. So, yes, of course, Druid cannot ex ignore the moles. I don't really have an outro, but hey, thanks for watching.